Hello and welcome back to All of Amber's Wands, a study of wands in the Wizarding World. I'm Amber and today we dive back into the Den of Slytherins to talk about Lucius Malfoy's wand. Thank you so much for everyone's patience while I took some time off for spring break, but I'm back in action with tons of fun events and activities rapidly approaching, but more on that at the end of the video. Lucius Malfoy is the renowned patriarch of the Malfoy family who are notable for their pure-blooded beliefs and their tendency to be in Slytherin. Lucius was a loyal Death Eater to Voldemort throughout the First and Second Wizarding War. He managed to avoid persecution after Voldemort was defeated by Baby Harry and remained a figurehead in the Ministry of Magic and Wizarding Society ever since. As an alumni of Hogwarts, benefactor, and on the Board of Governors for the school, he is basically like a PTO mom on the extreme. We first meet Lucius and his wand in Chamber of Secrets, and boy does this wand have a dramatic entrance, slamming its fangs down onto Draco's shoulder, surprising us all. In Order of the Phoenix, Lucius is arrested and in Azkaban until Voldemort comes into power again and releases them. Because of his fumble with the prophecy, though, Lucius has fallen out of the Dark Lord's favor, and this leads to the fate of his wand. The Malfoys are a powerful wizarding family, and part of the Sacred 28 pure blood families. Once being released from Azkaban, Voldemort uses Lucius's wand to try and evade the Priorian Cantatum effect that his and Harry's wands have. Voldemort does this as a power play and to further humiliate Lucius. We even see him snap off this snake figurehead attached to the wand as a way to further diminish him. We are unsure exactly if the wand is broken or just abandoned by Voldemort after the Battle of the Seven Harrys. What we do know is that Lucius does not use it for the rest of the series, and in the films, he reaches for his cane and is frustrated when his wand isn't there later on in Malfoy Manor. Wand Wood. We actually have an almost complete wand bio for Lucius, and weirdly enough, that's thanks to Voldemort. When apprehending his wand, he stated the wood type, which Lucius verified, and he said the core type when Voldemort asked him. This wand is made from elm wood, and Ollivander's description outlines it extremely well. According to Ollivander, elm wands rarely misfire, are least accident prone, and are capable of highly advanced magic in the right hands. He does go on to describe the magic from these wands as elegant, sophisticated, full of dexterity, and nobility. There is an old wizarding rumor that elm wands only function for pure-blooded wizards. This is simply not true. Muggleborns and Half-Bloods aplenty have had elm wands choose them as long as they meet the standards that this wand has preference for. In Celtic and Greek lore, elm trees are markers along the path to the underworld. They still stand to mark boundaries along those lines. The wood itself is more pliant than to be suitable for building, since it simply isn't strong enough. It tends to be resilient to water, though, so many of its uses were in that vein for docks and boats. Some research I came across actually paired elm with yew wood, which is Voldemort's wand wood. For a more detailed description of yew, please refer back to Voldemort's episode, but mainly, in short, it means death. As for elm, it is favored in making coffins, and due to it being a marker to the underworld, I can see where the death comes in. An ironic note I found is that a common belief is that witches do not like elm and tend to distrust it. Ironic for a wand wood, right? Wand core. This wand is made from a dragon heartstring. I will keep this section brief and a bit shorter than usual, since I really do think it suits Lucius and I don't think there's much to eat. I do think it's funny though that Elm is meant to be the least accident prone of the Wand Woods and Dragon Heartstring tends to be the most accident prone. That just is contradictory and funny to me. Dragon Heartstring is the easiest to turn to the dark arts and dark magic, and lenient to function for others that is not their true owner. This is probably a small part of why Voldemort chose this wand to use. 
Dragon Heartstring is also very flashy, and its magic can be showy and brilliant. So this paired with Elm's elegance must be a beautiful match. Fun facts. Other than this wand being part of a cane and unique on its own, I wanted to talk about a little discrepancy I came across in my studies. We are told that the cane is a Malfoy family heirloom, and we see Draco with it later on when his father is at Azkaban. But there is some debate about if the wand itself is an heirloom. Since pureblood families desire elm wands because of that rumor that I mentioned earlier, it wouldn't be surprising if this is a Malfoy's ancestor wand passed down through the descendants. That, and with the added bonus of it being a dragon wand, it would be more willing to be passed on from its original owner. If this is true, then this wouldn't be the wand stats for Lucius, but of some random Malfoy of ages past. In the books, we do not see Lucius use a wand after Voldemort uses it, but in the films, there's a brief moment where he is seen with a plain, lighter colored wand. Could that have been his actual wand, and this elm is just a figurehead of the Malfoy family? Truthfully, I can't decide which idea I like best. I do think that this wand's description fits Lucius very well, but that could also work easily enough for an heirloom, because it suits the Malfoy family as a whole, not just Lucius. So tell me what you think. Is it an heirloom, or is it his personal wand? Wrap up. This wand is a favorite, especially to Slytherins, and it's very clear why. I'm very proud to own it. I mean, look at it. It comes out of the cane like a sword into a scabbard. That's cool, and you don't have to be a Slytherin to love it. Now on to the rest. As I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, there is a lot coming up in the future. I have plans to be more active on TikTok, and I already have been. Mainly small little blurbs of wand woods, cores, and I think all of that will be fun to explore. It'll be a lot more brief than on here, I promise. On Instagram, I am still sharing all of the Master Wand Maker challenges, and you should definitely give them a moment of your time. These are skilled artists and deserve all of your praise if you are in need of a wand. The link will be down below. I do have plans to do a reaction to the Secrets of Dumbledore, so check back in later for that, and especially on Instagram because that's where I'm going to be giving the most updates. If you have any theories or guesses about the movie, share it here! I want to talk about it, please! Next, my local Comic Con is coming up at the end of May, and I will be attending all three days. There are not any guests from the Wizarding World in attendance yet, but there have been in years prior to COVID, so I have very high hopes. There are several Potter events there each year, so I'm very hopeful to make new friends at the very least and have some fun experiences to share with you all. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Don't forget to comment, like this video, and share with your wizarding loved ones. Please send me an owl in the comments or grab some flu powder and head over to my Instagram, TikTok, or Tumblr. Always a special thank you to Corey, the producer, editor, and agent of Every Witch's Dreams. Please go support his short films, photography, and all his other endeavors. Thank you for watching. Go support Corey, send me some owls, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.